This video is sponsored by the CuriosityStream Nebula Bundle, where I just published a 15 minute video all about Tom Holland's Spidey trilogy, comparing it to the other two, and a real deep dive into their origin stories, and a look back at how Tom's villain shaped him. It's exclusive to Nebula, and it's up there now. Sign up at my link and use code CINEMAWINS. moments before his death. Really setting the tone for this movie by picking right up where we left off, even having similar looking extras next to MJ. Hey, I don't remember Endgame Peter being in the Marvel logo like that. Yep, he replaced Civil War Peter. Spider-Man was responsible for the brutal murder of Mysterio, who will no doubt go down in history as the greatest superhero of all time. Appreciate that Alex Jameson hits greatest just as Tony is snapping in the Marvel logo. Honestly, this first 60 seconds is a pretty solid reflection of our world right now. Beck's illusion fell apart and froze in Far From Home and he was undeterred. They'll see what I want them to see. They'll believe anything. And after everyone saw the drones, he still claimed the elementals were real. And now J. Jonah Jones is saying something so categorically ridiculous, only a buffoon wouldn't say, wait, what about the guy that stopped all of the universe from getting snapped away? Just A plus commentary, no notes. What the f Cabby censoring. <laughs> in Civil War, Peter said the reason he needed the iris goggles was to block out the extra sensory input. But that doesn't mean he can't use it for facial expressions just like his cartoon and comic counterparts. Also, I'm sure he's freaking out about MJ's safety, but I love that he also might possibly be freaking out that MJ's his girlfriend. Are you Spider-Man's girlfriend? He's just back. He's like Spider-Man, <laughs> Humans, am I right? Ah, the commodification of real events. Ah, whatever, the Rogers musical is aces, not complaining. But now I'll kill you! What? I thought you said your dad really liked me! Yeah, well, not anymore! See, it's not the stupid, he hates you because you're a boy and I'm his daughter trope, it's because he's Spider-Man and you know what, never mind. I talk about Spider-Man parent stuff in the Nebula Companion video, shameless plug! Dude! 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 Not since basketball has a dude scene worked quite so well. But I understand her fear, MJ's tend to get dropped off the Queensboro Bridge. Dude! What the? Green screen? Nope, forget it. Cancel the movie. Negative one million wins. I don't even want to watch this now. Aw oh, man, Delmars has had to rebuild three times. It makes you think twice about providing Sandys to Peter. Come on, come on, come on! Okay, I'm so sorry! Now, now hold on a sec. Did Spidey's webbing shake the light pole as he launches them up into the air and then stay on the light pole and the manhole after Peter apologizes? Nah, we're back on track. <laughs> they aren't there yet. Pete's planning to save the light bum touching for marriage, which... Oh, now I'm sad. It was fun. I could have been more fun. I can be fun. We'll hang out again. Wait. When do you think? Well done on both actors' parts. They are selling it. I've been married for double digit years and this still stings. Happy is bummed and trying, but not too pushy, and May is just like, dude, I'm trying to be nice. Oof, been there. Oh no, oh god, oh no, Peter. I don't know what to do. Peter. Interesting how the throes of passion and having your entire life unraveled create similar sound effects. I've said it before about a mid 20s actor playing a high school kid, so I'll say it again. Tom Holland's workout routine. May mouthing, this is awkward, go, is perfection. Love the chaos of this long take. The frantic camera movements trying to keep up with Peter and MJ, quality oneer. The obvious joke here would have been to have JK pantsless, but I like the continuity for his character. JJ isn't going to work without his suit on. The compromise ends at shoes. But I also love that he's clearly been obsessing over Spidey in the background for years. Peter just hasn't been his photographer. Not cool. We all know you can only do that if he says, I don't know. I don't know. The DODC come in full circle. First, they essentially created Spiderman's first villain, and now they are one. I guess you shouldn't count all your chickens before they're... <laughs> Vulture, because Vulture's in the DODC from before, but now, you know, shut up. It's touches like this that make this world feel real. He's got world-changing weaponry in his apartment, and he saved the world multiple times now, but he's a poor teenager, so it's still a fire hazard mess of wires. Don't say anything without a lawyer! Jinx, you owe me an ending the cash bail system. Kinda helped him get the space. So in Spider-Man's illegal vigilanteism, you were his main accomplice. Stewie, I like you better when you're screwing over Kendall or defending Anna. Ah, and I almost forgot, look at this guy jumping after Peter. What, what's that he jumped off of? Huh, a cap. <laughs> Solid cameo catch, just in case there was any question of whether he's really Daredevil. Give me Vincent D'Onofrio's kingpin in the MCU. What? Oh, right, right. Anyway, it might be weird if Foggy ever meets Foggy. Also, fun fact, apparently this was initially a snow globe, but since the glass of the globe would have broken, they changed it to a brick. How did you just do that? I'm a really good lawyer. A plus lawyering. I love Peter just casually carrying all the suitcases. With great biceps comes great carrying capacity. Safe. He may not have always been the most helpful, but he's polite. Sort of cute that Happy adopted him after his inventor died. I think I'm 
This is it right here. That's how we should all do FaceTime in movies. Also love that Peter's phone is still cracked. Dang it, MJ is always reading the best books. I really like how you're a people person. I love people. I love them so much. Oh, I feel that. I've only had one week where my life has felt normal. That was when you found out. Because then everyone that was in my life that I wanted to know knew. And it was perfect. Aw, oh, man. This just goes to show how young he is at this point. Something I talk about more in my Nebula video. But Peter doesn't understand that he's Spider-Man and therefore doomed to put his friends and family in danger forever. It's a bummer, but those are the rules. You both like each other. We get it. Hang up. There's no new ground being broken. <laughs> Almost as if Happy has directed one of these before. Look, as a guy who started going gray in his early 30s, I can appreciate that baldness and gray hair aren't guarantees of someone's age. But it's clear that these are adults, and that's... Just so weird, but so perfect for how this would go in real life. As far as the public is concerned, you're no longer a kid once you're in the public eye. Hey, are you gonna have your spider, baby? Spider eggs? Do you lay eggs? Flip! Isn't one flip enough, you madman? If you want to read about our inspiring friendship, you can now in my new book, Flashpoint. One spider, two hearts. Yeah, that's not exactly what Flashpoint is about, although maybe it one should be at this point. MJ, I know you're a fictional character, but much respect on that James Baldwin shirt. I love that the mural that had Howard Stark has been updated to add Hank Pym. <laughs> is that a little Ant-Man next to a Pym particle? Also, everyone keeps saying that Dr. Erskine is new, but he was there in Homecoming. Although, for the record, a world with Erskine means a world without Stanley Tucci, and honestly, that's not a sacrifice I'm willing to make. He rolls. Uh -huh. Oh, a murderous. Stop. Mysterio was right. Stop. Mysterio we don't, that's all. Right. You know what you did. Stop it, you're embarrassing yourself. You know what you did. Hannibal Burris being the Mysterio truther is genius level decision making. I can only guess he pushed for it. His ability to hypnotize females, which he used to seduce Jones Watson. <laughs> yes, my spider lord. Yep, confirmation that literally anything will remind a teenage mind that they should be necking. Necking? Who wrote that, my grandma? Variants include smooching, canoodling, Petting? That's not that's not what that means. Megan out. Kids still call it that, right? Ah, they do have chemistry. Let's land there. I can Spider-Man there. I mean, they have crime in Boston, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, are. wicked crime. Ah, wicked, because Boston. Nice, 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 nice. Be a fresh start. And we'll all be together. Accurate. Well, half accurate. Man, that Death Star cannot catch a break. Yeah, you might as well just whip around as Peter. Everyone knows why bother. Although he may be wearing it right before he drops down. I feel like I'm gonna puke. Well, don't, because he will just make me clean it. I just really love Zendaya's delivery as MJ in this movie. It's hard to describe what it is. Timid but sweet. Range. Just range. Love Strange's musical cue, but not nearly as much as the comparison being made here. Wait, can you just, like, Google map the Sanctum Sanctorum? Someone forgot to cast an monthly maintenance spell to keep the seals tight. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Strange is slip landing while he was flying down, casually sipping coffee out of an oh for fox sake mug. <laughs> Can't beat it. Wong, you've actually generated a good idea. <laughs> Strange is so petty. He only recalls it this way because he's being pissy with Wong. Wait, I thought you were the Sorcerer Supreme. No, he got it on a technicality because I blipped. Do you remember the full moon party at Carmitage? No. Oh. Exactly. I'd watch a Disney Plus show called Wongy's Mind Blowers. Just leave me out of this. Ah, I'll have to do some karaoke with the new besties. The visualization of the spells in this scene, sort of reminiscent of how hackers visualize the internet and code, so hackers win. The problem is not Mysterio, it's you trying to live two different lives. This is pretty absurd advice coming from a guy who can literally change the world to whatever he wants and does with some regularity, but I think that's kind of the point. Strange actually hasn't come to terms with his own reality. If this was coming from Smart Hulk, it would really land. But Strange, while a decent person, is still petty and has something to prove. So he's going to Peter when it's clearly on him. We see in others what we hate in ourselves, bruh. Okay, I'll tell everyone that you're my best friend. I mean, they're gonna need to get along eventually anyway. I can't be the only one who wants an anti-venom storyline in the MCU. Is this what they mean by crushed velvet? Can't fit an iron inside that iron spider suit, huh? Vans are a good look though. Oh man, and the shadow changes with his outfit switch. Attention to detail. Please don't, don't let MIT be dumb like me. MIT is dumb? Dumb might be a stretch, but if you've seen that video of the robo dog with a gun strapped to it, I'd argue that at the very least, MIT hasn't seen Terminator. Basically what I'm trying to Peter really honed in his tingle in Far From Home, so they've got the sound and visuals of him sensing down perfectly now. <gasps> Dr. Olivia Octavius? Are we about to get a Katherine Hahn cameo? Hello, Peter. Oh, okay, okay. He's, he's cool too. JK, Alfred Molina rocks. What machine? The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Of course. You think Robin is going to do a show and not play Call Your Girlfriend? Play the hits. Should have killed your little girlfriend when I had the chance. What did you just say? <laughs> the instant kill mode spikes come out when he mentioned MJ. Looks like we got competition. I'm going to try not to say it over and over, but this movie is full of those, hey, it's those two people I know meeting each other thing 
I talk about all the time, and it's like on steroids in this movie. Doc Ock thinking Peter is cooler for having Ock looking tentacles is so fun. And while we're never gonna touch the Doc Ock fight on the building, this is exciting. You love to see Otto holding his own with the Iron Spider because it makes Toby Peter seem even more badass. Otto always was one for tossing cars at Spidey. Character continuity. Oof, what is it with Doc Ock that brings the trains? And Tony's still saving Peter's life. You don't listen to him, you listen to me. I always thought that was just a quotable line between my friends and me, but apparently it's a universal one. Peter, you're a hero. Yeah, no, duh. Why wouldn't you want a superhero at MIT? Oh man, what a nostalgic introduction. There's only one, well, one type of villain that throws those pumpkins and his laugh right after confirms it. The multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little. Wouldn't your first instinct be Beck? Is that you? It would be mine. The multiverse is real. But also Peter trusts Strange, so can't blame him. And I guess Edith had no reason to lie to him. Is this real? All illusions are down, Peter. How did you know you were made of magic? Because my, my Nana says that we have it in our family and- Yeah, she does. Magical hobgoblin, here he comes. But like, a good guy? Seriously, Peter, a little steam function like you had in Homecoming? Wow, would go a long way. That's better. Scour the internet and Scooby-Doo this <laughs> Honestly, I know I don't curse on this channel at all, except that one time because systemic racism, and maybe one other time I can't remember, but I don't actually have a problem with cursing, and more importantly, swearing from superheroes is just delightful. You never expect it. I mean, nothing beats when Rogers does it, but come on. Even though it was your spell that got screwed up, meaning that all of this is kind of your mess. Yes. Thank you. Peter's too nice to throw this back in Strange's face, but Peter doesn't know magic, Brosif. This one's on you. Please. Scooby-Doo this shit. Politeness. We could, like, help you. Why you gotta warm our hearts so much in the movie to then rip it away? Why is that always the Spidey story? Oh, right, the whole dooming your friends and family thing. Dr. Otto Octavius. <laughs> okay, Peter Parker, I mean, you just met Matt Murdock and you're friends with Stephen Strange, Harold Happy Hogan, Bruce Banner, and Pepper Potts. Better not ask Betty Brandt her last name. We you meet Kurt Connors, Michael Morbius, Sue Storm, Reed Richards camp. I'm done. Oh, is that a dinosaur? Ah, Captain Stacy made that mistake too. See, I knew there was a reason I rewatched all the Spidey movies for my Nebula video. If there was a giant dinosaur running around the streets of Manhattan, you would be the first to know. <laughs> what? What happened to we you? We tire of your questions, boy! <laughs> oh, we've missed you, Doc. Well, you're flying out into the darkness to fight a ghost. Technically, that's more accurate than you realize? Light Monkey's back, better be careful in the Czech Republic. Details from last week's devastating attack in London have a... <laughs> I like the idea that all the dubstep for Electro has been diegetic, like he creates it with his dubstep powers. It's me, Flint Marco. You remember? Okay, so I've been thinking about this for a while, and the fact that Flint asks Peter if he remembers him lends to the idea that he dies a long time after fighting Peter, which gives me a little hope for BB. Thanks. Trying to make new friends. I hate the woods. That's crazy. Woods are great. Get it together. Although I guess they do generally lack electricity. Y'all just gonna stand here and act like I ain't butt ass naked? I am. Uh, no. Not even a little bit. Jamie Foxx's workout routine. You know I can give you a real makeover. Let me guess. Into a lizard? <laughs> Glad to see these two still getting along. Where are we? It's complicated. A wizard's dungeon. A wizard's dungeon? There's no real way to sugarcoat that. It's literally the dungeon of a wizard. <laughs> Honestly, we're getting so close to Zendaya always being a win. I I could do any of this without you, so thank you. Yeah, of course. Aw, love and sincere gratitude. Ask him if this is like a tree monster. It's just a tree, man. Groot would like a word. Just a tree. Sound. Both a great moment for the character and a great way to move on from one of the most criticized aspects of the original goblin design. Man, I don't know much about electricity. Wait, actually I do. I worked on clearing the right-of-ways on transmission lines just like these for years, and I'm here to tell you that webbing will definitely, without a doubt, fix all this to perfection. Sometimes. I'm not myself. I'm someone else. Just throw all the Oscars at this man, will you? In this place, in, Norman, in this city, control? and I don't know. I don't know what's going on with okay, me. Okay. I, I, I don't. And gotta be honest, I did not have dementia on my villains bingo card for this movie. But it all leads to where we're headed here. Norman meeting May first should have been a huge clue to us that she wasn't safe anymore. <laughs> Putting donuts in the pockets of his new green jacket over a purple hoodie. Daily Bugle supplements. The only other daily fix you need. When parody is more normal than reality. Osborne? What what happened to you? What happened to me? Neither Willem Dafoe nor Alfred Molina are retired, but I think it's safe to say that these characters from 20 years ago kinda were. So seeing them both fall right back in is amazing. You're insane. 
God, I love it here. Same. So I stopped him. I had him by the throat. And then I... There's a few ways to look at this. Were they taken right when they found out Spider-Man's identity? Probably not, since Sandman seems to be trying to remind Peter who he is, meaning some time has passed since he floated off in the wind. And while it probably seems pretty convenient that the spell pulled them right before death, it makes sense when you think about how timelines work. They didn't get pulled before death so much as pulled from the furthest point they existed in their timelines. That's why the Peters are both their real-time ages if you consider that the timelines all run concurrently. I mean, the truth is that they wanted the best and most interesting versions of each character in their timelines, so I'm not too worried about the logistics, it's magic. That's how you should look at it. Abrica Marvelstone. If they die, they die. When you find yourself quoting the Russian, this one, or this one, you'd know you've done wrong. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> now you're thinking with portals? Yo, are those visual Spidey Sense wiggles around his head? I went back and checked when the Ancient One separated both Strange and Banner and they weren't there. That's a Spider-Man thing and it must be why his body was reflexively dodging Strange. Hot stuff. That might be one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me, but don't ever do that again. Appreciating a good time while setting important boundaries. I never knew I wanted to see MCU Spider-Man vs. Doctor Strange, but clearly the filmmakers knew it needed to happen because this is great, even if Strange is clearly taking it easy on Peter. No shade to Peter in his own movie, but I mean, come on. Seriously, what is it with Spidey and trains? Can't stop getting spanked by him. <laughs> that sigh and slouch. He hates this. Ah, I see, now Strange is really thinking with portals, but Peter's also been thinking. And when life gives him lemons, he won't make lemonade. He gets mad. He doesn't want their damn lemons. He demands to see life's manager. You know what's cooler than magic? Math. Incorrect, but A plus for enthusiasm. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. What was it we were saying about the hits? No way, that's his girlfriend. No way. I felt the same way until I saw him perform Umbrella on Lip Sync Battle, and now I totally get it. I'm gonna fry you from the inside out. Honesty. Refreshing honesty. I could go for a burrito. See, this is how they trick us. Snacks. Universal good guy language. He's gonna kill us all. Actually, he's not gonna kill any of you. Surprisingly. I don't need fixing. Especially by a teenager using scraps from a bachelor's junk drawer. Too soon, Octavius. How dare you invoke his... thing that someone said about him one time? Some of us still miss Stark. He's gonna kill us all. But yeah, his hesitation is understandable. OG Norman Osborn marveling at Tony Stark's tech isn't something I ever expected to see. What a time to be alive. Oh, my bad, my bad, Tony. Well, yes, I am thirsty. Fresh water or salt? You know, because you're an octopus. May is just genuinely good people. I'm glad she's here for the long haul. Look at this place and all the possibilities. It was condo? Yeah, yeah, the condo. I love the whole open floor plan, no. You ever get the feeling that Jamie is constantly holding back an F-bomb? I do. I fell into a vat of electric eels. I fell into a super collider. Damn, gotta be careful where you fall. This is some Taika level self-awareness and I'm into it. This prolonged shot of Peter with a jump scare Doc Ock popping up, it's like an homage to Raimi's horror shots in Spider-Man 2, but you know, heartwarming instead of terrifying. I just don't think I'll ever get tired of nanotech. Who are those guys, huh? You bring a cyborg with robot legs into my house? One of the guys made a mud? What's going on? Call me back. Superheroes slash villains are just so commonplace that Happy is mostly concerned with the fact that there are strangers in his house. No more darker half. Just you. Just me. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Are these your Legos? <laughs> I can't tell if he's mocking Peter or if he wants to play with them. But either way, Lego, Max. Lego. Where is he? Uh, he's inside. And yet here we are, outside. Did you not hear me say, don't lose him? Stealing scenes, he's barely in. J.K. Simmons is always a win. I have to say, this dolly zoom starts a scene that made me the most tense I think I've ever been in a Spider-Man movie. Every muscle in my body was clenched in theaters. And I don't seem to be alone in that. Bravo to this scene. We know in the back of our minds that Peter isn't gonna die, but the uncertainty of what's about to happen just makes our hearts pump. But even with this scene, I was still surprised when what happens happens. The snorry cam stuck to Peter, the muffled sounds with accentuated footsteps, Peter's faster respirations. He's literally surrounded by villains with no idea where the sense is pointing him at first. It's finally closing his eyes like he did in Far From Home that lets him hone in on who's the threat. That's some neat trick, that sense of yours. Yeah, got you killed once before if you remember. Norman's on sabbatical, honey. And I honestly didn't predict the Goblin bringing so much sass. So Green Goblin and Norman have different teeth? I went back to Spider-Man 02 and he does there too. Even before Norman mentions May, Peter's first instinct and probably his spidey sense tells him to be concerned for May. They even share a glance that tells May everything she needs to know. I saw how she trapped you fighting her 
holy moral mission. I like that while he's wrong, he has an honest to goodness perspective about May and her optimism. It's not just, I don't like good guys. <laughs> it's the live action version of the Homer slipping into the bushes meme. I liked you better before. And I think we all agree on this. It's really nice to see Jamie Foxx get to actually do something with this character. Did you see that? And a real moment from the hate merchant. <laughs> yup, sorry Petey, it's a, it's a yup punch. All the Oscars, pure Tyler terror. Willem Dafoe is always a win. And look, obviously I'm team Spidey, but that was a sick body slam. And if you're wondering why this cure didn't work on Goblin, it wasn't done. No good deed goes unpunished. It really is something to see Willem Dafoe back in this role chewing it up. We truly live in great times for movies. Peter, Everything else is going to crap. No, no, Peter, you, don't you, have listen, you listen to me. You have a gift. You have power. From the moment she starts, we know where this is headed and it doesn't make it any easier. And with great power, there must also come great responsibility. What a line. A line that first appeared in a Marvel comic as written by a disembodied narrator in 1962. I have a lot of thoughts about that line, specifically what it means to all three of these boys and why I think it actually signals something even more profound for the MCU Spidey over the other two. It's way too much to talk about here, so like I've been super subtly slipping in here and there, I made an entire full length companion video on Nebula looking into all three of these Spider-Man's origin stories, specifically looking at the villains of each of Tom Holland's three movies and just generally wrapping up my thoughts about the home trilogy and all the Spider-Man movies as a whole, really. It's exclusive to Nebula, which also has all of my YouTube videos, even the copyright blocked ones. All ad-free, sponsor-free, as well as three other exclusive videos that will only ever be found there. And if the response to this is good, I'd like to do retrospectives on some of the other series or franchises. Bond? Fast and Furious? Batman? And this is all possible because of our bundle deal with Curiosity Stream, where you can get access to Nebula for free when you sign up at my link below and use my code CINEMAWINS. Remember that part? I always forget to tell you that when I talk about this. But while you're on Curiosity Stream, check out my Comic Shop Country, which is all about comic book stores and how tough it can be in the industry while also being like the local watering hole for comic geeks. And there's thousands more options on Curiosity Stream to check out. Using my link and code, an annual subscription is 26% off, less than just $15 for an entire year. And once you sign up with Curiosity Stream, you'll get a welcome email on how to set up your free Nebula account. Sorry, Streamy Award nominated Nebula. Anyway, my Spider-Man Origins video is up there now. Look at that beautiful thumbnail. Nebula gives me a chance to make different videos like this that I think you'll enjoy that probably wouldn't work on YouTube for copyright or monetization reasons. So check it out, there's plenty to enjoy over there, and all with no ads. So that's part one, this movie is dense with the greatness, usually I'd post both parts on Nebula, but I'm still working on part two, so that'll be next week.